Okay, let's take a look at things before we start off turn number four. And I did not mention a couple of things here as we are recapping the end of turn three here. So we'll go ahead and talk about those things. So first of all, during the end of the turn, the Carthaginians went ahead and let several of their galley squadrons go because they didn't want to pay the maintenance on them. Their treasury is dwindling exponentially fast, and they decided to be proactive to try and uh, avoid going bankrupt at this point in time. They did, during the last turn, build a city, or excuse me, a town down here in uh, one of the spaces. I can't read it from over on this side, but they did build a town right there on the southern tip of Hispania to try and maybe uh, get a little bit of extra income there as well as GOP or CIV points so they can continue to hold their lead over the victory points above Rome. Right now, the victory points where it stands, the Carthaginians have 30 even, and the Romans are sitting at 27. So the Romans are only three victory points behind the Carthaginians at this point. And their income for the Romans, they are getting 16 talents per turn versus the Carthaginians are getting 13 talents per turn now. So they are going to have to do something about that at this point. Uh, the Romans, I don't know if I mentioned, but they did build a town up here in northern Italy as well. And then that is when the Carthaginians decided that they needed to build a town as well. So... Uh, the Carthaginians, during the manpower phase, they went ahead and they recruited uh, a couple more units of heavy infantry down here in northern Africa. And they will assumingly be sailing across into Sardinia to take care of those barbarians and then deal with the Romans up in Corsica. The Romans rec recruited a total of four legions, and those were recruited right here. Uh, they didn't recruit here because that would leave them separated from this northern army force right here so if they were going to go and try and rendezvous with them they would get hit by the roman force whereas it's just too much to put them right here and cross the mountain the mountain range here and then rendezvous with that force that way uh, you could do it with minor moves, but there's a total of four units there, so they'd have to spread it across, you know, two activations using both minor moves to to move all four of those units over two activations. And plus, they'd need the die roll, the high enough die roll to get across those mountains and into there. Another reason they decided to put them there is because... They can act as a stopgap measure. If the Carthaginians do get past this force and get in northern Italy, they'll have another force there waiting waiting for them, basically, to stop them from uh, getting in there and taking over Cisciplina. So that's the first reason. The second reason is they're there to react. They can go right down here by troop transport and then right over into Corsica if they are needed there to stop this force. So I wanted to put them basically right in the middle where they could have a chance to react in a timely manner to either the African force or the Carthaginian expedition over here that is now in Gaul. Neither of these forces were able to recruit anything during the manpower phase because nobody owns this province. So uh, the Romans are stuck with a total of six battle points, I believe, right there. And the Carthaginians, I think, are at 10 battle points right there. So it's still going to be even one-to-one -one odds. Uh, it was sitting in the favor of Carthage. However, we came to the uh, leader selection phase, and Rome drew another elite leader. Uh, they they drew the savior of Rome at this point, a 4-5 leader. He was the second draw. The first draw was a 2-4 Roman leader who went to Rome. The second draw was this 4-5 elite leader, and he was immediately placed in this force, which now this Roman force heavily has the upper hand over this Carthaginian force there. Uh, they're both equal in calves, so there's no battle shifts there. It's one-to-one -one odds, so there's no shifts there. And this leader is four versus this two, so that's going to put two battle shifts in favor of the Romans. You know, that could still come down to die roll, and those Romans could easily be eliminated, you know, with a bad, with a bad roll of the dice. Uh, but the favor is definitely leaning towards the Romans. 
because of that four or five liter there. So, you know, that is a bright spot for the Romans. The Carthaginians are going to have to think hard on whether or not they are going to go in there and attempt an attack. At this point, they very well could, if they got first activation and a very good die roll with this army, they could march here and here and eliminate, you know, potentially eliminate these forces and then continue on even further, which would possibly leave this force stranded as they would have to cross this mountain pass and waste some movement points there and then try and catch up with the Carthaginian army. It's all questionable and, uh, you know, it's going to depend on a die roll here as well as who's going to get the first activation and what Rome chooses to do versus what Carthage chooses to do. We'll see. Uh, down here in Rome, I think Rome recruited one. Yeah, they recruited one more legion down here. So they have a total of two legions sitting in Rome. And then they have another one legion here and another one legion here. Uh, so they may sacrifice this legion to upgrade Capua from a town into a city. That would probably be very helpful in uh, keeping the Carthaginian uh, civ points at bay and continuing because right now they're tied in GOP. So there's not going to be any gain from the Carthaginians on in the eyes of the GOP. So the civ points, the Romans are ahead. So the Romans are going to slowly catch up. And if the Carthaginians don't do something this turn, it'll probably be a tie game at the end of turn four, which is where we're at. And then going from there, the Romans are just going to continue pulling ahead and away from the Carthaginians unless they do something. The most immediate need for the Carthaginians, I think, is for them to get across over into the Sardinia and take out those barbarians, reclaim this province, and then get over to Corsica and reclaim that province. That's two provinces that they lost last turn that has really hurt them in the victory points this phase. And another thing that is really stalling them out here is the Greek uh, soldier of fortune army over here in Western Sicily. This army has, you know, caused some huge delays for this force of Carthaginians right here. They were planning on owning this whole entire territory, you know, a long time ago. And unfortunately, due to a lucky die roll for the Romans, King Epirus decided to switch sides and occupy the city of Syracuse. So it is what it is. The Romans aren't getting any victory points, GOP or otherwise, for having Epirus there. But it's doing enough damage to Carthaginians, just holding them down. And they have to garrison. They have to keep a pretty big garrison here, a decent garrison to prevent these Greeks from just going in here and wiping out this garrison, dropping a unit off here, and gaining this territory for Rome, because that or this province for Rome, because that will happen if they take this over. So they do have to keep a sizable force enough to where not only can they hold this city, but they have to ensure that they have enough battle points to intercept any force that does come into uh, this space right here. And assuming they can do that, that's at least securing Western Sicily for them and preventing any further encroachment by Romans or Greeks into Sicily. And also, that's a very important land bridge because it's just a hop and a skip away from the city of Carthage, which would mean an instant victory for the Romans if they could defeat that. Uh, one thing that the Carthaginians, you know, could think about doing is other than doing the island hopping from here to there and then going into Rome. They could also take this force here, which doesn't have a galley squadron yet, but we could easily send this uh, one last remaining galley squadron over to escort this force. This force could, mount, could uh, embark on some troop transports and take a very risky journey across this uh, deep sea navigation point and then attempt an, an amphibious invasion into Rome. But then, of course, they are risking greatly sinking right here if anything bad happens. And these uh, deep sea navigation points are quite easy to lose ships, battle points, and forces. And they can, definitely cannot go in ragtag short of any battle points if they're going to invade Rome that way. Uh, so that's what we're looking at there. 
Um, I don't believe I forgot anything. Oh, the Carthaginians, I think I mentioned they did recruit, I think, two more heavy infantry units here in uh, northern Africa for what I already said their stated mission is. Uh, other than that, it is what it is. The main action probably is going to be going down in southern Gaul right here. We're going to find out what's going to happen really quick. This is probably going to take place in the first activation. And the other area of interest to watch is going to be in the province of Sardinia and what transpires after that happens. Once the Carthaginians get over there, if they can get there, then we'll see. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start off turn number four. And I believe I covered about everything except for the cards that the Romans are still hoarding that Soldier of Fortune card. They really do not want the Carthaginians to get, get a hold of that card. So they traded in their other cards, held on to that. The Carthaginians during last turn, they drew this at some point, the Archimedes effect, which we've already went over. And they're going to hold on to that just in case uh, they can use that in defense of this town or... The city of Carthage itself if things get very desperate so we'll see what happens here we're gonna go ahead and start it off all right so we went ahead we are not through with the first activation all the way yet but I wanted to stop and talk about what has just transpired so the Romans up here thought it was just too risky to leave that army hanging up in southern Gaul there if by chance the Carthaginians did get lucky with some die roll that army would have been, you know, pretty much annihilated, potentially the leader loss as well. And then the northern gates to Rome would have been pretty much wide open at that point. There would have been, you know, those legions still there. But with the Carthaginians threatening the Sicilies with this force, as well as what took place over here afterwards, I think they made a good decision. So that force is there, ready to react to whatever may happen and they are pretty stacked up on battle points uh, other than that they sacrificed the legion that was here in Capua to build a city there so now they have a total of three cities down here two of them are in central Italia and the other one is down here in Brutium and other than that that was pretty much the, their entire turn they didn't use their second minor activation so when it came to the Carthaginians, what they have decided to do is they took their 1-5 leader Mago, who was drawn and placed in Carthage. They moved him over to uh, command this force, which is going to be proceeding northwards here in further activations. They decided to leave their expeditionary force stationed right where they're at. Uh, this is so they can at least create the presence of a threat in the northern Italy and kind of, you know, force the Romans to choose to defend here, here, or, or other places as well. So they want to have a, a multiple front threat based off of three entries into Italy, the northern, and then by the islands of the Sicilies, Sardinia, and Corsica, as well as from the main island of Sicily itself, which they have taken this entire force that they had here. It's, I think, a total of... Uh, 12 battle points and they moved it and they are going to attack Messina where these independent Greeks are stationed at here they're going to take over that space or at least they're going to try to with minimal losses and they are forcing the Greeks to make it one of three decisions basically the first one is they can sit there and do nothing or they can intercept this force and join in and hopefully cause enough damage there to where they can't continue on into Italy. Or they can let them proceed and attack there and go into Italy, and they can go ahead and march west and take over the Roman town of Libysium. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But they could take over that and then threaten Carthage herself, but they can't go beyond the islands of Sicily, but at least they're creating that bridgehead there and clearing the way for future Roman invasions if they can hold on to that island. Of course, in reaction, if they went there, the Carthaginians could easily just come east over across into Sicily, wipe that out, and then proceed into Italy from there and just say, the heck with these islands, you know, we already got our gateway in. So 
they're kind of forcing a hard decision on the Romans here by making them decide what they want to do with these Greeks right now. Um, one thing you will notice that it's now a blue Greek counter as a leader, a 1-4 leader. Well, you could just say that I forgot to, when we were doing the leader selections and the leader removals, I forgot that King Imperius, you know, really should have been removed after the first turn and we should have been drawing Greek leaders from there on out. So they got a bonus as in they had a 3-4 leader that entire time. And now this time they drew a 1-4 leader. So we'll just say, you know, King Imperius managed to go ahead and live, you know, 125, 150 years of age. Uh, so my mistake, but it's corrected now for those of you who may have caught that. And uh, I didn't get a chance to do that. So now we have officially removed King Imperius from old age. And like I said, he's been replaced with a random Greek counter. So... We're going to get to go ahead and play this out. The Romans have to decide whether or not they're going to intercept or go ahead and march straight here. I'm pretty sure they're going to go ahead and intercept, so they will join in this battle, and there will be a battle of Greeks versus the Carthaginians, and we'll see what happens there. They need to, The Greeks need to stop them from the Roman outlook, of course, and the Carthaginians need to win this battle. This is going to be a key campaign here in eastern Sicily and then uh, the Carthaginians will probably get on their next activation depending on what happens over in Sicily they'll probably start making a move up into Sardinia to really start putting the pressure on the Romans I did not mention that when the Romans pulled out of this province to come back here and rendezvous and regroup with their uh, 16 battle points worth of legions that they automatically ceded this territory to the Carthaginians. And that is where that is at. So they have only taken one minor activation. They took their major one for this force, and their minor activation was to move their leader from Carthage over here. And they do have one more minor activation, which is going to be to attempt to get this garrison over to this province or this space right here, and that is just so in case somebody, and they rolled a four, so that is just in case somebody draws a Barbarian Reassurgence card, that we won't have any Barbarians reappearing there and taking over that province from, uh, from Carthage. So that's why I wanted to do that and move that garrison unit over there to fully secure that province of Southern Hispania. And that's going to be about it. We're going to wrap up this battle over here in Sicily. And at the you know, end of the turn, maybe I'll talk about what happened. All right. We went ahead and resolved this. And the Carthaginians managed to launch two separate attacks into Messina. The Greeks basically have their leader left who almost died but not quite and they have one battle point of heavy infantry left the mamelukes have also mamelukes i don't think that's what they're mamertines that's who they were the mamertines had been wiped out as well as the majority of the greek forces the carthaginians did lose one full unit of heavy infantry as well as one unit of light light infantry in those campaigns so they didn't didn't get away without any any harm to them, but it's uh, really just a scratch at this point. So the Greeks are pretty much doomed next turn unless the Romans intervene very quickly, and I just don't see how that would happen. I mean, they can try and get this legion down over there to reinforce them. That would be one, two three four they'd need to roll a four or greater on their movement point roll uh, but then there you know if something goes bad there then that city of tarentum is going to and the province itself is going to be completely undefended as well so you know i don't know if that's what they want to do i don't think the the carthaginians are going to have enough strength once they do flush them out i don't think they have enough strength to take over syracuse which is a good thing but if they get a foothold here and get a good defensive position going in Messina, they can easily reinforce over at the end of this turn. They don't really have the money to do it right now, 
but they could easily do it in the manpower phase of the next turn. So that's where that's at. That's what happens. And the Romans are going to have to try and figure out what they're going to do. Right now, though, we are going to go to the Activation Cup and draw and see who's going to go next. And the Romans might be in some trouble here because the Carthaginians are going to get to go again. So let's find out what they're going to do, and then we'll check that. Okay, I wasn't planning on doing this many updates for turn four. I was actually just planning on getting with you guys at the end of the, the very end of the turn and kind of recapping what happened. But this is actually very entertaining what I find is going on. So <clears throat> the Romans during their activation, while well, the Carthaginians first is where we left off, they went ahead and wiped out Messina, captured it. And that was pretty much the end of their turn. They didn't do much other than that. I don't believe I, I I'm pretty sure they that's pretty much all they did. Um, afterwards, it was the Romans activation. And I decided that they would go ahead and pursue basically, uh, they would act like the Romans. So what they did once they had rendezvoused and regrouped with their uh, 16 battle points up here, is they went ahead and marched on the uh, Carthaginian force that was down there. Well, the Carthaginians had Cunctator in their hand, which allows them to withdraw unlimited times, basically. And this force rolled a two on their movement points, so they had a total of seven when they moved down. And that force withdrew, and they only withdrew a little bit each time, kind of trying to get the Romans to pursue as far as possible into Hispania. Uh, the Romans could have pursued once more in there, but at, by the time they got down here, they realized kind of what the game was, and they stopped pursuing so they could continue uh, controlling this province. In route while pursuing, they dropped off the garrison there as well. So uh, the Romans once again have control of this province, Narbo Nemesis, and they got the two talents in their income due to that. I adjusted the GOP, the province's control, et cetera, all that good stuff. Um, but the Carthaginians have pretty much, basically, they baited the Romans away and out of northern Italy. After that, it was a Carthaginian activation, and what they chose to do is pretty much that's when they decided to go for broke here. So they sailed out of uh, Hippo Regius and they went over to Sardinia and defeated that one barbarian tribe that was there. So they have provincial control over Sardinia once more, but they did not have enough movement points to go and head over into Corsica. So this is going to put the Romans in kind of a tricky spot here because this is what's going to go on. The Carthaginians on their next activation, obviously, are going to march over or sail over and take over this, conquer this legion, destroy them, and take back Corsica. And so the Romans are either going to have to leave Rome and go over there, which I don't think that's going to be a good idea, or they're going to have to bring back their savior of Rome, recall him back into northern Italy here, and either if he has the movement points, he can sail immediately across and perform an amphibious invasion. Uh, that is, if the Carthaginians will probably, when if they get the next activation, they're going to use more than likely go over here, and then they're going to also, as a minor activation, they're going to sail this galley squadron underneath there right up into here after the after their army conquers it. That will prevent this army from launching an amphibious invasion with no galley squadrons. They're just not going to be able to do it. So that would make them basically have to go the long way and defend here and keep the Carthaginians out of Italia that way and force them into an amphibious invasion using that very large force. But if once they recall them out of northern or southern Gaul, they're going to lose this province once more because this force is going to march right back in there, defeat that garrison, no problem, and then take over and control that province once more. And then they're going to get the two talent bonus to their income plus the GOP. So they kind of have the Romans in a tricky situation here, as well as this force is ready to go up in here. And, you know, even if they have to launch kind of a suicide assault, eh, you know, it's not really what I want to do. 
they would probably want to hold this hold on to these guys until the end of turn four that way they can reinforce them with a couple more battle points and then get up in there but the problem with that is if they wait till the end of the turn the romans are also going to have a manpower phase and they're going to be able to do recruitment as well and more than likely they will be doing a little bit of heavy recruiting in this province right here to stop any more encroachment from the Carthaginians. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting, so I wanted to go ahead and check back up on that. Uh, also on the, one of the Carthaginian minor activations, the light infantry that was there, they split that into two garrisons, that way one can stay here, and the next garrison will follow up this force. That way once this uh, force goes out of Corsica, there will be a garrison unit there, and they don't have to leave any battle points behind. Anyway, that's it. I'll see you guys at the start of turn five. Well, it is going to be the start of turn number five. Turn four just ended, and we're going to go ahead and recap what happened over the last couple activations since my last report here. So the Romans that were down here retreated back in, all the way into central Italia right over here. That way they could defend the Carth against the Carthaginians who had sailed across over into Corsica defeated obviously i think it was a single legion that was there and took over provincial control of corsica once more so they are back to pretty much where they started the game at and the romans reacted by bringing back that large force like i said over here to prevent any further incursion into uh, italia itself so uh, on the way back, when they abandoned, they didn't really abandon this province, but when they withdrew from this province, they did leave two, two uh, full legions there, as well as at some point during one of their activations, they built a town right there as well. So they're kind of moving up even further in the civ points ahead of Carthage, uh, Carthage, excuse me, but Carthage is still ahead in GOP and victory points. Victory points at this point in the game are Carthage has 30 victory points even and Rome has 26 victory points so what does that mean well at this point Carthage as long as they maintain what they do have and stay ahead in GOP uh, over the next couple turns they could probably win this game if they just hold the Romans at bay at this point if the Romans were to go in and uh, claim a little bit more of Carthage, the GOP that Carthage controls, and that would be the biggest effect because it would be reducing GOP for Carthage and increasing for Rome. Uh, they would have a shot at winning perhaps, but it looks like their number one goal to win is probably going to have to be to destroy Carthage, which is, that is not an impossibility at this point because Rome is bringing in quite a heavy income at this point. They are making 20 talents per turn as opposed to Carthage is making 15 talents. And as well, Carthage has been having to pay upkeep on their galley squadrons every turn. Um, they've been releasing on average like one squadron every turn, uh, sending it back in a pile because... They've been trying to kind of alleviate some of that pressure on their treasury. And in turn, they've been losing some galley squadrons. I think they have two left. One galley squadron is still down in Carthage. That's there to prevent any amphibious assaults by the Romans that don't have any galley squadrons still to this point. And there's one up in Corsica, which is doing the same thing as preventing any amphibious assaults. Um, as long as the Romans don't build any galley squadron. So <clears throat> that is pretty much what wrapped up the turn. I did mention in the last clip that the Carthage has managed to get a foothold there kind of at the strait leading into uh, Brutium. So that's where their last activation was at, was basically kind of doing this over here. Uh, over in Hispania, the original force that withdrew up here has basically stayed there they didn't really have any any battle points to continue any assaults in here however they did draw a card which allowed them to look at the tribal strengths of two tribes anywhere on the map so they went ahead and looked at this one which turned out to be a three battle point tribe and this one which is a four battle point tribe so they know that they could probably conquer this 
and this tribe and then go ahead and mop up the what remains of this tribe with one battle point left and get three whole provinces right here that's going to help out their income as well and also keep them far ahead in the GOP which is at this point kind of what actually not kind of it is what's keeping Carthage ahead in this game so uh, at the end of the turn we went ahead and wrapped up had the leader draw phase leaders uh, were removed Rome did not draw an elite leader as a matter of fact they drew some pretty poor leaders their first draw in Rome right here is a 1-3 leader and they replaced in their large force that savior of Rome is what I was calling him they replaced him with a 1-5 leader so it's um, they don't have the quality of leadership they once had but that's okay because Carthage didn't draw very good either. They drew a 1-2 leader in Carthage, and their next draw was a 1-5 leader. That is a named leader. Who is that? Uh, that's Hamilcar, actually. So Hamilcar is up there in Corsica, and he's going to try and see what he can do. But uh, they did, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but Carthage built a town way down here in um, southern Hispania on the coastline there. And that was to give them a little boost to income, hopefully, and maybe even go from there. They're, they're trying to catch up in Civ points, which they are down right now by, uh, they are at six Civ points, and the Romans are at 11 Civ points. So they have quite a ways to go there. But it was more mainly due to the income factor. They need a little bit of boost to their treasury here. So that is what they're trying to do. After the leader exchange phase, we went into, uh, I'm not saying this in particular order, but there was no isolation on either side, so we went ahead and skipped the isolation phase. And then we had the income phase, all that good stuff, until we got across to the manpower phase here. And both sides pretty, did some uh, heavy recruiting. The Romans, obviously, more because they had more in their treasury. But uh, what the Carthaginians did is down here uh, in the uh, Strait of Gibraltar right here. They recruited two units of heavy infantry, and they're going to march up as quickly as they can, uh, rendezvous with this force right here, and they're going to help clear out Hispania. It is pretty vital that Carthage gets Hispania right here and uh, gets you know the GOP points and the income from there so they did do a little bit of recruitment in terms of assistance for that expeditionary force other than that <clears throat> their majority of recruitment costs went into carthage where they recruited two more uh heavy infantry units and that will reinforce this force over in sicily more than likely and what the Carthaginians are going to try and do for the most part is really the, their only objective of this turn. They have two object, well, three objectives. Hispania, get those three provinces over on the left in Hispania, which are off camera right now. And their other objective is to hold the Romans here and force them to continue to keep deployment and garrisons in those cities and towns over there and uh, severely limit the Romans' mobility. And then their third objective is to basically create a stone wall in Sicily and prevent any Roman incursions there. They don't really have to go on the offensive because like I said, at the, the rate that this game's going, if the Romans can't pull ahead in GOP, Carthage is gonna win. If the Romans can't destroy the city of Carthage, Carthage is gonna win. So that's what the Carthaginians are doing right now. They're pretty much just stalling. The Romans are going to have to figure out a way here to uh, perhaps build some galley squadrons in the next turn. Maybe this, well, they won't. It, they're kind of tight on money right now. They're at five talents, and the four of those are going to go straight into activations. But uh, they're going to have to figure out a way to get some galleys on the map and start heading down towards Carthage and take that city out. So that's where we're at. Um, the Romans, they did recruit, they recruited one light infantry in Southern Gaul right here. And that was mainly just to cover up this barbarian sign, the barbarian location. And that way, if there is a barbarian um, uh, reoccurrence card, I can't remember the exact name, 
that we won't have any barbarian tribes popping up in southern Gaul like we like has already been bugging the Romans a couple times. So they recruited that one light infantry, and they recruited one legion here in northern Italy. They are more than likely going to march over here to this town and build that into a city for the additional income so they can... Um, what they need to do, like I said, is get some galleys on the map, and that's going to take money because they're still going to need to be recruiting legions here at this point in the game. So they really need to increase the rate of income so that they can build the forces that they need to make a final rush on Carthage, which is pretty much their main game plan from this point on. They recruited several legions down here. I believe there was a total of four legions recruited down in the southern tip of Brutium right here. And that is just to kind to kind of counterbalance this Carthaginian force, and maybe even perhaps if we can get these this leader and those legions and from Rome down there into Brutium to join up, and also this legion that's in uh, Tarentum down there as well to join up, then they have a good shot at getting a foothold moving across the strait because it is a straight movement. It's not considered an amphibious assault if they march across that strait. So. They, uh, that is a possibility for the Romans to get down there into eastern Sicily, destroy that Carthaginian force, uh, destroy the Syracuse garrison there, take over the city of Syracuse, and then, um, you know, take over the rest of the main island of Sicily, which would be a very, very big threat to Carthage. So, uh, that is one option that the Romans are going to try and play with here, try and maybe get a foothold in Sicily. Because as of this point, this is just, I don't, you know, it'd be better, it's better for both sides the way I'm seeing it, for them to both just to have a standoff right there. The Romans want to keep the Carth, that Carthage army from doing anything and moving into Italia, and the Carthaginians want to keep that Roman army right there preoccupied and unable to go back into the Sicilies. So that's what it is. We're going to go ahead and play this turn out, and I'll check with you at the end of the turn. Well, that was unexpected. We made it through almost the entire turn of number five here, but the Carthaginians got really lucky, actually, and ended up winning the game here. So what happened? Well, the Carthaginians, uh, well, actually the Romans started off first because they were down in victory points. And what they tried to do was quickly move their leader from Rome down into Brutium to rendezvous with that legion that was up here, combine up into one large force and attempt to go across there. However, in the first two activations that they had, this leader ended up rolling pretty low on his campaign movement. And the first turn was only able to get down here. The second turn was only able to come over here, but didn't have enough movement points to pick up all those units that were there, as well as cross over into uh, eastern Sicily. So that was a no-go for them. In the meantime, the Carthaginians were uh, consolidating over in Hispania, trying to take out some of those barbarian tribes that were over there at the same time. They moved over their leader from Carthage over into western Sicily to reinforce that island. And after, I think, their third activation, what they had in their hand was two tactical surprise cards, as well as an ambush card and the spies card that they've been holding in their hand basically since the beginning of the turn or the beginning of the game. But what came out most vital were these two tactical surprise cards. There was also a card drawn. The, the uh, Romans drew a disease card, and that ended up killing their leader that was uh, protecting Italy right here in Pisai. So that leader had died, and he was kind of evening out you know the odds there in that location what the romans also didn't know as well is that the carthaginians had those two tactical surprise cards and uh what they did i think it was on their third possibly yeah, it was their fourth activation what they ended up doing was taking that leader there and rolling and it was a five it was a hamlet he had five rating on his campaign value 
he rolled a five on his movement, which gave him 10 movement points. Now, they ended up launching an amphibious assault into Pasai and playing one of those tactical surprise cards, and they rolled a six, and the Romans rolled a one. They did have one battle die roll shift, so they negated the Romans' uh, attack of 10% losses, and that canceled that out. So the Romans took a whopping 60% loss, to that force that was there. I believe it was 18 battle points total. And they ended up retreating backwards uh, into Rome itself to try and salvage a couple of those battle points. And of course, the Carthaginians ended up pursuing them and marching straight on into Rome. Uh, what happened there was two battles in Rome. And the units I have down here were the units that were involved in the very last battle that were. Uh, uh, defeated. So the Romans, they had uh, a full legion plus a reduced legion and one unit of light infantry. So they had a total of seven battle points. The Carthaginians, they had the uh, uh, couple more units than this. This is uh, what they had left after the second battle was over. They had two more heavy infantry units and a single unit of light infantry they ended up taking some heavy losses there it was uh, one cavalry two heavy infantry uh and what is that a third heavy infantry so they lost three heavy infantry units and a cav unit uh, assaulting rome there so in the end they did manage to capture rome which is an automatic victory for the carthaginians and they ended up winning the game so that is that I think it uh, it boiled down to the Carthaginians drawing these two tactical surprise cards. Without these, they I don't think they would have been able to do what they did there, or they wouldn't have had the confidence to attempt to do that. And also the um, determining die roll for the Battle of Passe was really... Um, it was just devastating to the Romans. I mean, it didn't harm the Carthaginians at all, and it wiped out 60% of the Roman force that was there. You know, it wasn't as bad as Cannae, but, you know, it might as well have been in this game. That was pretty much it. So, you know, it is what it is, but the Romans have been defeated, and the Carthaginians have obtained their victory in this scenario. I've played this scenario several times multiplayer, and it's quite entertaining. I, I'm really decent with the Romans. Usually what I do is I knock out Epirus as quickly as possible, and then I go straight to Corsica and work my way down into Sardinia with a large force, and then from there make a direct assault on Carthage. I've won several times using that method against live opponents, and uh, I wanted to kind of switch it up here and create a more interesting game by having the Romans march around Gaul and try to stop the uh, Carthaginians in Hispania, as well as go in this route into Sicily, which I usually don't attempt to do, but I wanted to do that this time. I wanted to, you know, experiment and see how the game would play out, and that's what ended up happening. So quite a shocker in this last turn. I definitely wasn't expecting it to end in this manner in turn five, and I really wasn't expecting Carthaginians to march into Rome, period, throughout the entire game. It's just the opportunity came up for them, and they took advantage of it, and just completely lucked out with some die roll and some card draws, and then the Romans losing their leader due to disease was just on top of that. It just kind of set up the whole scenario and encouraged them even more to go ahead and invade Italia there, and uh, it was just a bunch of good luck on the Carthaginian side and bad luck on the Roman side. You know, if this leader would have had good roles on his campaign movement, I'm sure there probably would have been other types of reactions down in this area, which would have forced them to use their major activations over here instead of up there. So, you know, maybe that would have been out of the question if this camp, if that leader had rolled better movement points and managed to get over into eastern Sicily. So you just never know, but that's the way it ended up. Um, anyway, thanks for watching these videos of scenario number four, Pax Romana. I enjoy this game. It uh, brings me a lot of good times playing it with other people. I really enjoy the wide selection of the scenarios that are in here and 
if you would like me to do the ultra historic which would involve all of the factions i'd be more than willing to do so a little bit later down the road just comment or whatever let me know if you'd like to see that and i'll go ahead and put it together i wouldn't uh do a play-by-play -play on that what i would do is sort of like what i did on the last few turns of this game which is just do a little sit rep at the end of each turn kind of informing you know the viewers what happened what transpired to the best of my ability and what i can remember during the turn because in the ultra historic games there's a lot of different stuff going on and you know i'd inevitably miss some of the smaller details but i'd probably manage to get the gist of it and you'd probably be able to tell what was going on for the most part so if you'd like to see that let me know i'm going to do a review on this game i think it's been a long time coming i rather enjoy it so Maybe I'll give you some of my deeper thoughts on the aspects of it and what I think is great and what I think could be better, etc. So anyway, thanks for joining me here and I'll see you guys later.